our creativity is worth something. And if it's not worth something to that person who, who's interested in it, uh, it's okay that, that you let that sale go. It's okay. You, you're worth every cent that you're charging. Well, it's not your crowd, I always say. That's not your person. That's not who you were looking for. So keep yes. looking because yes. they are out there. All right, here we go. On an earlier episode of Artist Bebop, we spoke with Austin Wafer, who is part of the art collective around here known as the Mid Cities Artists. Through our conversations, his father, who is an artist, always comes up, and I've always been eager to meet Ron Smith, who's here with us today. How are you doing, sir? Good. Thank you for inviting me. It's good to be here. Yeah. Uh, check out the website, ronsmithartworks.com, and on Instagram, ronsmithart. But yeah, as I was saying, you are your legend. You were a legend in the mid cities, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, well, good. I'm a legend somewhere then. So. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a legend in my own mind, but okay, you are, um, you are I'm way out of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but yeah, he he's he cites you a lot, and um, I guess I am most curious about because I have children, but they're young. And I do, I have them making art, but I, I'm curious about that connection. We're going to do a little dad talk here. Okay. Uh, dad talking is, uh, I'm glad I actually uh, was an influence without being an influence. Uh, Austin actually left, left Shreveport at an early age. So uh, even though we were always in contact with, with each other, I didn't know that uh, he would delve into art the way he had. So, uh, he was here going to school at the DMI, the Digital Media Institute uh, for Animation. And uh, he was living with me and going to school and working two jobs, actually. So he, he's working pretty hard, but I watched him paint and uh, draw daily. I mean, he'd be some of the headphones on sometimes and uh, he'd be painting and drawing. So the influence uh, almost reversed itself because I hadn't painted for, uh, over 28 years at the time when I started painting again, probably six or seven years ago. And uh, watching him artwork actually influenced me to pick up the paint and, uh, and brush and paint again, because I hadn't painted probably since shortly after college. And that, that's been a while ago, because I finished, finished college in 82. Uh, and uh, Austin was born uh, ooh, way after that. 10 years later. So uh, his influence has been why I paint. It's, and I even say it in my bio, and you, you'll see some, uh, some quotes about my youngest son being my greatest influence. So uh, it's one of those things that kind of over, it took its own road, so to speak, without me having really direct input on it. So uh, I'm, I'm blessed that, that, he, that he came to me at a point when I probably needed, uh, I needed him. I read on your your website, the bio part, that uh, you had had an accident that um, oh, yeah. you weren't I, sure. Is that what the gap was between the, the... The gap really was, I'm a graphic designer by trade. So I do graphic design daily. Been at that for 30 uh, years. Uh, logos, branding, uh, just images by itself, just in itself. You'll see some more, uh, I would say more graphic design elements of some of, some of the paintings that I do uh, on the abstract side, especially, but I broke both of my wrists on a motorcycle in a freak accident. I, uh, to avoid an accident, I, I had an accident. So 35, 40 miles per hour, I missed a car to avoid the accident and hit a manhole. And the manhole literally stopped the bike and the motorcycle just stopped in its tracks and it crushed both of my wrists. Oh. So uh, uh, it's a life lesson, but uh, I'd say to anybody, my, uh, the birth of my boys, Philip, who's my oldest son in Austin, and the motorcycle wreck were two of the most important things ever to happen in my life. So 
the uh, motorcycle wreck slowed me down, I would say. I was doing graphic design and working uh, a postal job, uh, much like my oldest son used to work and uh, working 18, 20 hours a day just to get my graphic design business off the road. And uh, in doing that, I just, uh, I stopped doing anything with my wrist. Uh, the computer was easy with my wrist, but uh, the mental block it had didn't have anything to do with graphic design. I just didn't know I could draw a paint again. I never tried. I just knew I could do the computer. So uh, when Austin came, all of that changed. Yeah. Well, so it, it it sounds like it wasn't that incident that stopped the the painting. It was just your vocation that. Yeah. And when I, when I started, uh, I wasn't painting again, I started to draw again. Uh, I do some black and white illustrations. Uh, you'll see a couple on my website. But I just had this block about doing it. Uh, I'm, I'm really I'm not sure if the, uh, the, the accident did that. I just kind of stopped because I knew graphic design was my way away from the post office, kind of. So I knew I could make a living in graphic design because that's what I went to school for. I didn't go to school to paint. I went for at the time. Back in the day, it was called commercial arts, you know, so because I did everything by hand. And I had to literally teach myself how to uh, work on a computer because when I finished college, we weren't doing things by computer. So I'm, I'm, I'm self-taught uh, on all the Adobe platforms. Yeah. Well, it's interesting how that happens. I came from a photography background in a dark. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then you get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it made me lose interest in photography. I was like, I'm not going to sit at a desk all day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like, it's not what, um, what I got into it for. But, um, I, I never thought about that in the graphic design world as much. Although. Yeah. It, uh, it was one of those things that were, to me, uh, most of my clients were pretty uh, easy to deal with. It was a little bit more uh, lucid with me. Some uh, clients are really, you know, pretty stringent and structured about what they want, but they, they tend to let me have uh, my way 80% of the time. And they're coming in with an idea, but I take it and go, go with it. But uh, I think the strength was I had practical art background. Uh, the college I went to, Mississippi Valley, uh, in Itabina, Mississippi, we had a great art department. So I had artists around me all the time. So it uh, it challenged me to make sure that I could somehow apply graphically what I do now in the paint world and vice versa. So to me, they kind of work hand in hand because sometimes, even today, I think uh, some of our uh, graphic designers lean on the computer. I lean on my artwork. So, so that's, and I kept that balance, uh, just the practical skills and learning about the painters and things like that. Even though I didn't have a lot of, I only had two, maybe three painting classes in my life. So what, what you see is, uh, is me, is me and uh, God working this out, so to speak. So you just kind of. Well, it, it, it's an, it's another language learning, like say pre-digital. Yeah. Those were yeah. different tactile languages uh, but graphic designers have always fascinated me because I think they always make fantastic painters and I see that but the minute you said that I remembered um, I had a friend his name is Ray Phillips was a graphic designer tremendous work and um, but I really and that was the first time I had been around um, a graphic designer but you could really see how strong composition was yeah, the ideas of layering, um, like were very easy to him, and I learned a lot by watching that. Um, it's, it's interesting that you say uh, you, you mentioned layers, because uh, I'm working uh, on an idea about doing a, uh, an exhibit called "My Life in Layers," because I was uh, even when I'm having shows, and especially on my uh, more abstract work. Uh, everything's in layers because I see it that way and I build from the back to the front. But I do that with my rule art too because it kind of expands and it builds on itself. But but they represent so many different parts of my life because I grew up in the country. So when you see my painting uh, in the rural aspect, you'll see the out you know the outhouses or the shotgun houses or the or the rural scenes. 
that's how I grew up. I grew up in a small town in Belcher, Louisiana. That uh, most of those, those are, people were my were my were my uh, relatives. One of those kind of times. So yeah, those pieces, I, I think, were the ones that captivated me the most. Looking through your work and okay, they're they're just you know, you can feel how personal those are, and then right, yeah, that yeah. that is um, that's their strength and that depth and um, just how you captured that area so well. So. I, I try to, even in, uh, in that aspect with the rural things, to me, you may see a, uh, a house that's not lived in, but I try to use the trees and the greens of it to actually show, though there's not life in it right now, it once had life. So when I'm finished with a with a rule piece, I'm not really finished until I make make the piece feel like it, it needs to feel like somebody lived here. There's still the heart of the home there. Uh, you, if you read some of the, my Bible, I, I talk about the heart, and the, and the heart is where I paint from. But I'm also a drummer in my church, so all of that is more heart uh, driven. So uh, you you probably pick up on those things. I didn't realize until I'm watching some of my working on my like, oh that came from here that came from here you know that came from there uh, uh so it's it's weird that everything that i have to do with my is with my hands and i enjoy playing the drums as much as i do painting but they represent totally different parts of uh, of my brain so to speak it, you're you're talking about uh, looking at your work and discovering things isn't it funny to to be a spectator like that, almost oh, yeah. in your, that is so weird about. It is weird. It's so <laughs> weird because I look at, I'm like, when did I finish that? When did I have time to finish that? Because I'm, I'm a graphic designer by day. And nights like this, it, this is normally when I'm painting. Yeah. So I, I, I switch, I switch brains when I hit that door. I'm like, okay, let's, let's switch into this. And uh, part of the time I also lived with me, uh, I had a, I had an office home too before I moved to another office. So walking in the door, walking to the next room, there's that mind shift that, that sometimes we have to manage because if not, I'd be all over the place, you know, that kind of thing. Because cause with music in my head and I never paint without music, I rarely do graphic design without music. It's always music somewhere. And I watch Austin and I watch him paint and do what he needs to do. And he always has uh, his music playing. Uh, we'd be in the same room, but he he's in another world, you know, so. <laughs> well, that that is big around here because Austin, we, you know, we'll we'll paint together sometimes. And yeah, okay. music's always going and yeah. he's usually piped into something. Um, yeah, yeah. But, uh, that's, so, so he, like, didn't at all see you, did he see your work growing up or nothing? Mm, if he did, he saw graphic design. Yeah. I didn't do a lot of stuff with my hands, but I think what Austin is dealing with really is innate. It's just, it's who he is. Uh, yeah. That that artsy fartsy side of him came naturally, I think. <laughs> and I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm thankful that I got a chance to see it, even though he wasn't really around, you know? So uh, that's, that's beyond me. Uh, well, I, I think it has to do with upbringing, how expressive, your tribe is, <laughs> you know, yeah, to, yeah, to, yeah. to me, my, my mom is such a storyteller. Um, I see all the elements that led to creativity. I can tell just speaking with you that you're an expressive person, you know? And, uh, I am. I, I have my moments where, I, where I'm not as expressive. Sure. I learned with, uh, with Austin uh, living with me though, uh, I'm, I'm a big proponent of, of saying you have to meet people where they are. And in that, that's how we learn from each other. And uh, we get the life, life lessons throughout from, the, from birth to the day we leave. And I, 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 I have constant conversation with people about how we have a whole lot more likenesses in our life than we do differences. And uh, if we get to that point, a lot of the things that we deal with right now the, the division among could be religious or political. I think a lot of those walls would be broken down if we realized 
that my story is different than your story. Uh, Austin's story is different than mine, but they connect in a way that uh, if you don't understand that, you won't understand it. Uh, even when we, I don't know if he told you, you know we have a father-son art show here. No. Yeah, like, we have a father, yeah, it was, it was, no he one talked here, about I never heard of it. Yeah, yeah, where we, we literally had a show. We, I showed about probably 14, 15 pieces. He had about the same amount. And they had never had a uh, show here. Uh, uh, a local uh, art, really art agency, uh, Chloe du Duplessis had a, had an agency here. She'd moved since then. And she said, wait, why, you know, you're an Austin artist. Why don't you guys? And we did this art exhibit. And it was the culminating event when he moved back to Dallas. So the last thing he did before he moved back is we had an art exhibit, father son exhibit. And it really brought a lot of people out. Uh, like you said, we, we, had, we had a good tribe here. Austin had a good, because I'm older than eight. My mom's one of 12. So all of the parts of you're, that. You're the oldest? Yeah, I'm the oldest. Yeah. So, uh, it's we, interesting we, being we had, the oldest. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> my, uh, I'm actually uh, 23 years older than my baby sister. Yeah. So there's a big I, gap there. I only have two siblings, but I'm 13 years older than my brother. Okay. And, um, okay. and then my sister's nine years younger, but it made, it prepared me for fatherhood. <laughs> <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, that's um I have actually talked about doing a show with you two here in the mid cities. So we just we actually that out talked there. about some, some years ago. Uh there was a uh, there's an organization that I actually uh I'm part of uh and we talked about doing that at one point, uh, participating in the same show, because it's a traveling show. And Austin, I got involved uh, some three years ago. Then last year, Austin joined them. That They had a, a show there at the Community Beer or something like that, somewhere in the Arts District. And Austin mm -hmm. joined them at their show after I did my show. But nice. because of that, you know, he had his people there. So he had a good tribe of people to come come support him. Artists, uh, we need the support. Uh, now, it's not always about buying the art. Sometimes it's just you being in the space. Well, especially during these times, I um, I miss our shows so much because every oh, month yeah, and a half, you know, Austin, yeah. uh, all the artists around here, we get together, we do a show. And the more I reflect on that, you know, we sell some artwork, but to me, the more exciting part is seeing everyone, seeing yeah. what we've made that's new, going out afterwards and just hanging out. <laughs> that's like equally valuable to, to selling a piece, you know? Um, it, it really is. The camaraderie is so important. Uh, that's why whenever I see uh, Austin post something, I immediately share it. It's important. That, that it gets out. Uh, and I don't think people understand the importance of, of sharing those things because a lot of people I've learned may like my art, but they may love your art. So they'd be more prone to buy it. I'm a, I'm a big supporter of that. It's not, it's not always uh, what you do. It, it's about the people that want what you do. And sometimes those are your, uh, the people that you are really close to, but they prefer another style. So that's why I encourage other artists to make sure that they uh, show up at things that they normally wouldn't show up just to just to be in a just to be in a space because uh, seeing a person you know walk in it it really makes the room brighter so uh, I'm 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 big about us always supporting each other. I'm happy to hear that. That's that's our mentality around here. It's like I say to the guys, um, you know, they might like one of us, or ideally they like all of us. Oh, yeah, as a past. Yeah, that, exactly. That's that's the best situation. But you know, even if they pick up one of us as collectors, that's yeah. a win. Because it's a win. It sure is. I'm we, glad you said that. That's good. And, yeah, we, and sometimes we don't see that, uh, especially during this time of uh, uh, of COVID, uh, because we're not in touch with each other. It's made us, I think, uh, not take for granted the, the the value of touch. 
being in somebody's space and not being able to actually reach for them or to, to hug on them like we normally would. Yeah. Uh, it's created some walls that we just weren't quite ready for. Uh, and uh, I've, we've had to be a little bit more inventive about how we sell. So I've been, I wasn't a big proponent of social media uh, just because it's just so time consuming and I don't like to be in people's face all the time and I feel like I'm begging, but uh, because of social media, I think is the reason why we've been able to survive. Uh, I've actually yeah. sold probably more work during COVID than I did the three months prior because I was forced to think outside the box and actually put my goods in the faces of people that I'd be like, no, I don't want to show you, you know, that kind of thing. Like, I'm always showing stuff. Well, <laughs> you want people to buy it, you, they need to see it, Ron. So, uh, well, I, I'll go back to something you said about um, kind of you don't want to be in people's faces too much. Yeah. yeah. That I think that is something that probably affects most artists yeah, that, yeah. that want want the exposure but feel like oh i'm being too pushy and yeah. i think the key that i found especially during this time so you're talking about being creative we we've had a lot of time to think about it yeah because you know there although there are still markets there are still shows going on statistically they're not yeah. going to do as well as when we were just out there yeah and so to me, it's become really thinking about my marketing and not thinking about like, hey, I'm selling you something. I'm just having a good time kind of studying the social media and each platform, it's, it's different language there is, yeah. and figuring out how to have fun with it. And that's what I found that actually sells you the most. I'm not sitting there worried. You know, I put my mm -hmm. links in and stuff, but I'm not worried about, is this going to get me sales? I think if people see what you do and you love and you share parts of your process, then that's your biggest seller without being like a used car salesman or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's a total mind shift because if not, you think you are this used car salesman and that's not something you want to do right. because we, we, are, we are not as extroverted as, as our people who are selling the cards. So uh, it, it takes a different kind of mindset to do that. But I've learned to adjust and adapt, um, mainly due to the, some of the classes I've been taking with this company for the last uh, four, four months probably. I've been in this session uh, about our business and I've learned a lot about that. Uh, I, I want to encourage people to uh, artists who are not always willing to tell their story is that I was told during our show, Austin and uh, the show that Austin and I had, another artist who had never heard of me walked up to me. Her name is Karen LeBeau, great artist from New Orleans. And she was here a few months and got plugged into the art world and just thought, I had been here all this time. And she said, who are you? Where you come from? And she was looking at my artwork and she said, people should know about this art. And I was like, yeah, like this. And she said, and she, I will never forget this. Her words to me was, tell your story, tell your story. And once I started telling my story about the rule or the abstract, because the abstract has a different story. It takes on a different connotation because my band director in junior high school was also an abstract artist. I have a huge, I have a five foot by six foot painting that he did in my studio now that his daughter gave me when he passed. So it's my inspiration every day. When I walk in my studio, I see that huge painting because he was the biggest influence on the, on the abstract side. So uh, I have so many influences. Uh, my teachers from high school, it started with him early, but I've learned to have a story for that and have a different story for that. And, and we have to be willing to say what that is. And once we start talking, we're okay. But it's getting us out of that corner, like, you know, come over here, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and I, I've just kind of learned to, uh, to look at the room. Uh, I talk about looking at the room a lot in one of our classes. Uh, Monitor the room, see who's there, see why they're there, but listen, 
and then you'll find out what you need to say and how you need to say it. And everybody won't like your work. Everybody's not going to buy it, but that's okay. Don't be offended by it. Uh, the blessing is in the lesson. Yeah. yeah, that is awesome. That's an awesome way to look at it. I, um, our shows that we have here, I spend most of my time um, because I, it wasn't always my behavior. I wasn't naturally like, hey, I'm going to talk to you through necessity in the art world. Oh, right. <laughs> being, yeah. Yeah. being a career yeah. artist, I figured out that I'd better learn, even if it makes mm -hmm. me uncomfortable. And still, sometimes I'm terrified. It's weird. <laughs> even, yeah. even just it's asking, even just even asking, you know, like, I, I didn't know you prior to this, but that process of a little, it's a little intimidating. Like, it's like, oh, is he going to think I'm weird or, you know? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, it, but in person, I think that's amplified, say at an opening. So I spend yeah, most of yeah. those openings um, grabbing some, if I see them talking about somebody's work, I'll grab the artist and uh, kind of throw okay. them at the person. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, that, I'm yeah. like, they're, you know, I feel like, it, it's weird. It's like, uh, almost like smelling blood, but not, yeah, not right. that morbid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I just want that artist to do well, you know, because here's a fan. They're, they're into their work and um, in their instance, they don't really have to say much, you know, because they'll just talk about their work and yeah. the thing they were that's, interested that's, in. Yeah, that's, yeah, and that's what you just said is so, so true. If you have to have a conversation, it's about your work. It's an easy conversation to have. And if you get us there, we're fine. We don't even talk about this other stuff. Oh, no, no, no. Let's talk about this piece. Then we want to shift pieces. Then that's different, you know. And, yeah. and my and because my artwork is so different, uh, it's like left brain, right brain. I I switch based on what I have or what they're looking at. Uh, one of the shows. Do you I mean? Had, do you mean it's so different between the different series? The you know, the abstract yeah. versus the rule. Okay. And I yes. had I had two pieces uh, in a. Uh, business class that we had, an art class we had, we had a show, in the exhibit we had to have two pieces. And my two pieces, one was rule and one was abstract. And the person that was looking to collect my work looked at the work and said, she said, I didn't know the same person that did this, did this. <laughs> but when I explained it to her and how that was, how that came to be, she loved both pieces for different reasons. And her husband like the abstract and she liked the rule but called it the story you know because even the story and you'll see some of this on my on my uh website i have i have a period where i use burlap i've been using it this week uh, on a couple of pieces but that burlap series though it's burlap i use it in my abstract work and i use that texture i'm really big on textures because my grandmother who worked in the cotton field. My, I grew up in the rural south and there was cotton picking and things like that. I use that in memory of her. Yeah, that, and those things uh, are what connect me uh, when I'm making abstract versus rural. The burlap to me fuses the boat together. Where I'm taking my days of growing up in, in rural Belcher to the day now that uh, these people like these, these uh, colorful abstract pieces uh, and it makes them one. And some people love the texture. They, they're attracted to the texture because now they know the story. Because that, that, that burlap is really, really big to me. And I take it, uh, I buy it, I cut it up, I wash it, and I put it in the dryer. Uh, I uh, soak it with paint. Sometimes I'll, I'll shape it. And sometimes I'll let it lay flat and just layer it and, and make it do different things. So uh, it's, uh, I just finished one piece uh, this weekend and it's all white it's just all white burlap uh, and it it represents a period of uh, of quietness for me because it's all white but it's it's an unraveling of what was going on during COVID and the fact that we were apart from each other but it, it's 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 like a breath of fresh air it's like, and it's just it's just white on top of white but it's layered with different textures of burlap because some of it's thin some of it's thick and some of it's really corrugated and some of it isn't. 
T talk about um, this period of time. It's all it's affected all creatives and all different types of ways. What what is it? What have uh, you seen? What have you experienced? I've I've seen people be more diligent about the efforts in doing these kinds of things because normally you couldn't have talked me into getting on some computer. <laughs> Talking, <laughs> but I've been, but my mentor See, uh, uh, enhanced my Rachel, anxiety. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just just messing with that. Uh, uh, Rachel, who is, Rachel Wilkins, who's my my mentor in New York, uh, she challenges us as students, uh, entrepreneurs, to think outside the box. So I've I've been challenged to do that. So even though we're we're in this these kinds of Zoom calls for me have been uh, so important. Uh, so tomorrow at three o'clock, I'm looking forward to our class of about eight to 10 people that I'm used to seeing every Wednesday, haven't seen them in two weeks. So I'm excited mm -hmm. about seeing them, even though it's through a Zoom call. But uh, uh, I, think, I think this has made us uh, be more diligent about how we market and how we advertise our products because as much as we don't want to, if you want to make a living at this, you really do have to pay attention to. It. So the accountability factor for me grew exponentially because now after okay, I spent this on this piece. This piece is five feet. About this, it makes you calculate how much you're actually getting for your pieces per square inch. You're like, oh, because you spend, you know, fifty hours on a piece and you get a hundred dollars. Ah, yeah, you know. So where's your value? Uh, you either add value or you, you devalue. Uh, our creativity is worth something. And if it's not worth something to that person who, who's interested in it, uh, it's okay that, that you let that sale go. It's okay. You, you're worth every cent that you're charging. Well, it's not your crowd, I always say. That's not your person. That's not who you were looking for. So keep yes. looking because yes. they are out there. And, you know, you're so right about um, I think this has made a good majority of artists stronger social media wise, because we, ha we have this microphone, we have this platform yeah. and it, it does cost you your time, your effort. All of this yeah. is work. It's production. It's, um, yeah. it's hard, but that's what everything is, you know, going out there and, Exhibiting is, is no easier, but this is such a fantastic way that we have to market and connect. I liked what you were saying about, you know, you're excited to see your eight people. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I think that there's a networking meeting that I was uh, the chair of. And so we started doing Zoom calls, which at first everybody's weirded out by. Yeah. But I feel like I learned so much more. I paid so much more attention. I felt more connected than when we would meet in person at the Mexican restaurant and um, mm -hmm. people are in their clusters. Yeah. Not necessarily as connected, but when- That's so true. Yeah, you, yeah you're right. You're right about it. Yeah, that's, uh, if, so you're saying that technology has uh, created an opportunity where, where we're not so closed off, or we can just go and say what we need to, what we may have wanted to say in that restaurant rather than, uh, and because we do, we tend to move off and go into clusters and create a group within a group, but you can't do it on Zoom, you know, so. Even yeah. what we're doing here, you know, because the audio, if you think about it, we can step over each other. So I really have to pause and listen and, yeah. extract what you're saying versus when you're in person we are we do have squirrel tendencies where <laughs> yeah yeah look you know we are distracted by anything um so it and i i I've thought about that a lot and then i thought about that as far as putting content on my social media and how it has to be that way too yeah. you have to really almost jump through that camera if you're, especially if you're putting your face on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is frightening, but I, I think yeah. to me, it's been 
the most rewarding thing because I'm yeah. just doing these talks, like extracting your knowledge. Other people are listening and they're benefiting and they're growing and hopefully it leads to whatever they're trying to do, you know? And, and um, you know, I've learned that sometimes it's about the, the relationship and the building of a relationship because some people will buy immediately. And I've had people to look at my work for a year or two and finally decide, I've been wanting a piece. And, it, and you finally got that perfect piece for them. Yeah. And uh, we, we have to be patient as we grow. Uh, some people are instantaneous about buying it. Some just aren't. They, they want to let it marinate for a, a week or a year. But uh, yeah, I, I've, I've had, had that to, happen like 20 years later. Yeah. 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 You're like, <laughs> Wait, you, you, you really about thought about that? that? You want to buy something? Oh, you I really, you really just... thought about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and and even that, I, I encourage artists to, if they're watching their own social media pages, is to look at the patterns that people have. Some people have a pattern of looking at certain things. So it's incumbent upon us to watch that pattern and listen for them through technology to say, oh, they keep liking this style and shoot them a text or a message saying, look, let me know if you're interested. Sometimes, I mean, I've sold artwork because I, I just kind of made a little push and said, hey, let me know. And I said, you know, I was looking at this because sometimes I, it's out of sight, out of mind. And we don't have the personal in, you know, in person thing that we have to kind of engage another way. And I, I find myself doing that. Uh, uh, I take I take more close up shots of my artwork so you can yeah. see the layers than I do yeah. because if you don't if they don't see what we're doing especially on the abstract side or even my rule stuff and they see a close I'm like oh I can really see it now uh, uh, yeah. come up with creative ways to to uh, have people to show I mean uh, people to look at your work and that really does enhance the opportunity for you to to engage them and that's not always a sale. Sometimes it's just engaging them and them saying to somebody else who they say, hey, I saw this artist, Sergio, he was doing this style, whatever, because I looked at your page. And, and you, you, you have a very, uh, it's almost Louisiana-like. It, it's, a, it's a cultural, I don't know what it is. but I have I heard that all my life. Yeah. yeah and, and I've seen <laughs> the primitive part. I'm like, wow, but, but this is what I noticed about your work. To me, you capture the soul of the person. Like uh, at this one, one piece in particular, the Dodger player okay. uh, at LA. I was like, wow. I knew who that was before I knew that. I was like, ooh. <laughs> you know, because sometimes people think art has to be spot on what it looks like. I, I, love, I love that about portraits because it's not so much about getting the exact likeness, drawing the likeness, if right. you get elements, mainly I would say in the eyes. If you yeah. nail the eyes, the rest of the portrait Woo. almost doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. I learned that learning, looking at Picasso's really hard. Okay. If you look at what makes a Picasso a Picasso, yeah. Yeah. it's often in the eyes. If you think of Guernica, the bull, like looking yeah. into the sky at the coming apocalypse um just so many pieces the first the the first steps do you know that piece where which one the child is walking with the oh mother? okay yeah so that's that's supposed to represent the first steps into the war oh wow and you see it in those eyes yeah. you know um it, it's I'm, I'm glad you said that because early on in all my, pen, my pencil portraits I used to do, I don't do them anymore because you're talking about 30 to 50 hours per piece. I remember ask, somebody asking me about why and how. And it's, 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 it's in the eyes. The character yeah. of a person's, their soul, it's right here. And I guess that's what I've seen in your work is that somehow you've captured that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, because I, I kept scrolling, kept scrolling, like, oh my gosh. And I, because I wouldn't have known you had I not seen. Also, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, so it, it was it was cool to see your work and see how you paint it uh with even with the paint being heavy and some I'm like wow you you just you just captured the you captured the character of that person the soul almost 
I like it. I love your work. But, well, thank you. But yeah, that texture goes back to, like I said, my um, graphic design friend. That was many, many years ago. Okay. But I loved, and his his works didn't have the actual texture. Okay. But that idea of texture, especially in graphic design, how things are layered. Yeah. To cause that illusion. I just wanted that tactile feeling. And that's a lot. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I want people to look at them and uh, just want to touch them. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I find myself with the same kind of mentality where people are like, no, no. I'm like, uh, that's my intent. You know, I'm like, yeah. no, look at that. Get up close. And, and they especially the, the burlap pieces, because I, I seal it with, uh, with a clear, re uh, not resin, but a clear coat heavy enough that it's okay it's okay. the gloss yeah i do the yeah. same thing because especially yeah. with texture and i was looking at your abstract it does look like i mean there's good texture on there um but i yeah i, I love that there's something magical about making somebody want to touch something yeah. and almost yeah, really. it, it, it's almost like a game to me <laughs> <laughs> like especially when you watch kids <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Parents are always so uneasy when they're like, "No, no, no, don't, don't touch. No, let, them, let them touch. Like it's yeah, okay." Yeah, it's yeah. it's, <laughs> it's my I fault. Actually, I scared somebody <laughs> one time at an exhibit. They were right up on this painting, looking and looking and looking. And I walked up behind them. I said, "You can touch them. Oh, <laughs> no, you can, you can touch it. It's okay. Go, go right ahead." Uh, but I don't know if you've seen some of my music pieces. I actually use sheets of music in the artwork, and you'll see it in the background. I, I just finished commission a couple of months ago that I sent to a friend of mine. His wife surprised him with a uh, with a music piece. It's a drum piece, and I actually sheets of drum music in the artwork. And it's a drum that we played in college. He was my section leader in college. And uh, we've been in contact via social media. We caught with each other. And his wife knew I liked, he liked my work. And so he, she surprised him for his birthday. And he was, so he sent me a video. He was dancing around the house with the painting. So uh, when you see that, it, it really, it, cause I was nervous. I was so yeah. nervous about whether or not he was gonna like it, you know, even though you know, he had, he had seen my work. I was like, yeah, but this is different, you know. That is, that is terrifying about doing somebody's likeness. Um, I, I did one of Austin. I don't know if you saw that. No. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to send it to you. But yeah, yeah, I was glad me. I was glad he liked it because, you know, it's a portrait and he's my friend. Yeah. And like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I have this anxiety. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, that, um, like portraits of, pop culture or somebody I don't know right, yeah. so yeah. easy but then to get a request um, yeah not so much if it's somebody I don't know mm -hmm. it's like okay well I will but if I know the person it's like oh man I better I better get this right <laughs> that that is the one reason why I don't do portraits of people that I know <laughs> well like you said you you want the person dancing around their living room with the portrait yeah. you made of them and if you don't get that um i think that could be very I harsh you. For... I, didn't, I didn't do it you know? <laughs> oh, they're not happy. Yeah. Yeah. it does mess with us it does <laughs> yeah I, I i actually challenged myself on that the uh, the networking group i was talking about um so the, the first thing that happened a few years ago is they they made me the secretary of the group and you know, it's kind of weird because I'm an artist in this uh, this business circle, <laughs> and I'm like, man, this sounds boring. And yeah, so, right. to to make it fun for myself, every meeting had a speaker, so I'd make a portrait of them. Oh wow! I would make I would usually make this portrait the night before. <laughs> And you so you give yourself plenty of time to do it, huh? But you know, everybody loved their portraits, and they would look forward to oh wow, seeing. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but it 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 broke some of the nervousness about that, but yeah. it um it never fully goes away. I want to pick your brain on um, so you work graphic design, and that's a very commercial world. Right. Yeah. It, it really is. It really is. Now I, I've talked about graphic designers they make great 
um, great artists. But one thing I do see sometimes is that you can see the commercialness. Mm -hmm. Some of there are. Mm -hmm. I did not see that in yours. I could see the background. I could see. Yeah. I could see the graphic design brain, but you don't have that imprint. Is there something you do to differentiate when you go into studio? Because you, you take off your commercial hat that you've been working at all day, and then uh, bam, you're in the studio. I have to create in my head uh, a degree of looseness uh, when I'm doing abstracts. Uh, my rural pieces are a little bit tighter because they're more like the buildings and the houses I'm doing. But when I'm doing that, there's a mind shift, uh, a shift of the brain. And sometimes if I'm not careful, I will make uh, an abstract piece look too commercial for me. And I've, uh, I've covered up two of them uh, <laughs> do, doing that. It uh, uh, wasn't always easy because I had layers and layers. So I'm using gesso like crazy. But anyway, uh, my intent is to be intentional about not making it look commercial. So I intentionally try to make sure that it doesn't look too structured and whatever. I want a freedom in it. And that's why I do the abstract. My, my, my real pieces are so nostalgic and so, to me, they're more formative about the, the structure and making it lifelike or whatever and making sure the colors are good and strong. But that's a degree of tightness that I do that I can't bring into the abstract world because if I do that you'll see it so I get looser intentionally on my abstract that's why you see splashes of color and and layers of color because I intentionally don't want it to appear that uh unless unless it's a commission piece that a person has seen that they right. they want this color and want these strokes that's different but for the most part uh those pieces take on a different role because I, I do a brain shift. Somehow I'm like, I just, okay, I want to do that. Oh, I change the music. Uh, I'll change the music based on what I'm doing. So, so sometimes yeah. the music will dictate that. It'll be, sometimes it'll be jazz and sometimes it'll be a, a Christian contemporary or sometimes drummers or sometimes R&B or sometimes uh, I'm a big Yanni piano eclectic kind of guy too. I love orchestrated music and things like that. And what they call what uh, elevator music. I, yeah. I listen to it. I, I listen to it all. So I'll change the music based on the mood of the painting. Yeah. So yeah, there, there's some other things that go on with that. That music is so important. I remember there's that show Pawn Stars. And you know, they brought a piece of artwork into him. And I forget who it was. But he pointed out that this was around the era when artists started to have music in their studio. And that just, I was kind of dumbstruck by that statement. Oh, wow. oh, because okay. I, I always had music going, you know, um, just in general. Right. But, then, um, but especially in the studio and the idea was so foreign to me and I, I thought about it. I'm like, well, yeah, they weren't going to have like a, a quartet in their studio playing for them, you know, before, <laughs> before audio devices, before, yeah. Um, yeah. The whole band. I just and so, so they painted in, in silence and that's weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure if I can do that. I'm not sure. If yeah. I can it, um, but yeah, the, uh, we all use music different ways. Cause to me, it's a, uh, it's often like the music driving the piece sometimes. Like I notice, yeah. uh, it, and I'm very, um, that's not something I, I've been too conscious of. I just, it's, it's the mood I'm in dictates the music I'm playing. And then that dictates the pieces, which is, it's weird to think about all that connectivity. We, we had a, uh, like a little consortium with artists that exhibited at this small, uh, office of an attorney and they he had his own group of artists that they would select every month and we had our own say in who how how the show would, would go and i invited a friend of mine who's a pianist uh to play soft music 
in the back room a while, and they were like, and, but it gave the room life. Oh yeah. Even even though I wasn't in the room, maybe at that, because my art was spread out, but they enjoyed the fact that he played. And some of the other people would play music, but I actually have somebody to come in there and play keys. And he was changing the music bass. So as a, the music changed, the mood changed, and you could feel the shift in the room. Uh, that's how important it is to me. The next artist had a had her nephew who plays acoustic guitar. He came and played, and the music has such a, a presence that all other artists said, "Okay, I got to find me an I got to find me a musician." <laughs> you know, uh, I just think uh, creates you know the creative part of us can collectively uh, work together, but we can help each other. Because not only did I uh, bring him to play, he got two two small gigs from that. He was like, he was like, can you play him up? And he was like, well, yeah, cool. And I think that we, we can help each other like that. Totally. The the theme song to this podcast, Kid uh, Mental, he's at Kid Mental Music, check him out. But okay. he, so he, I got him to um to do the, the theme song because I just loved what he does. He's a, like, it's just him and a microphone making the music, it all comes wow. from him. He uses the loops. Okay. And, um, and so I hit him up for another song and then he has this Patreon. And he's like, well, just do it through here. Just pay me through yeah. here. Yeah. And then I was looking at the Patreon and I was thinking about how much I enjoy the, this process with him back and forth, you know, with the, the artist Bebop song, he just nailed it. And then he did another one for me. And then I looked at what he was offering uh, as far as keeping him on retainer. And so I have him on retainer now. And so for my little promotional oh, stuff, wow. That's cool. I have him doing like custom, like they're called drops where it's just like wow. he says one word. Like if you, I have these videos and if you click on it, you'll hear the sound and that's kid mental, but and that's okay. And not everybody's listening to the sound except on formats like TikTok where that is okay. about sound and visual. Right. But I think the people that are, that are looking at it are, um, are rewarded because there's the visual, but then there's this added sound. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea that hopefully that leads to more people using his talents, you know, and that kind of a symbiosis. So yeah, you're definitely right about we can we can help each other yeah yeah and that's that's what it's about so yeah especially especially music so influential like a lot of what i make you'll see me you see me rip off lyrics <laughs> oh. <laughs> but but it's because the again the music drives the art sometimes and that's that's where the inspiration came from was that song so imagine lyric. a movie uh, with no music Imagine a, a climactic part in uh, probably one of my uh, favorite movies in Gladiator with the sound going yeah. <laughs> And all of a sudden you have this dramatic music. Imagine that not being in there. Yeah. It, it, we're, we're just like, okay, that's not, uh, <laughs> that's okay, it was okay, you know, but the music uh, adds such, it adds passion to it, I think, you know, and that's, that's where it comes from. I'm able to transfer the music uh, and the heart of the music to the painting and vice versa, I think. I, think they, I, I, just, I cannot work without music. I, I cannot work without music. It's, it's uh, something I've always done, but I started playing drums at the age of 10. In that, we played all kinds of music, orchestra, even at 10. Uh, my band director, who was my art uh, first mentor, he grew up playing all of these instruments and he listened to everything. So he kind of poured that into us. Even growing up in a rural area, a lot of us got a, a real introduction to more classical style uh, and not just to the popular stuff. So we, we, we played so much uh, in the different genres that we had to get it or we didn't, you know? So and I think that stayed, that stayed with me. I, you know, veered off to some other things, but for the most part, that root of what he taught us early on really uh, 
helped us throughout. Cause a lot of my friends from uh, from those days, we remember those uh, styles of music and like, he had us listening to that and we had no idea the influence it would have on us. So it's great influence. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny uh, being kind of young and not getting that, those types of things sometimes and years yeah. later it hits you and um yeah. for me it oftentimes it's like what a fool i was <laughs> <laughs> what a fool i was thinking i knew yeah uh, what i didn't know <laughs> but but that's life um yeah. here, i'm gonna plug your website again ronsmithartworks.com the instagram is ron smith art thank you for uh for joining me, it's good to to have somebody legendary um, come to life a little more. One day we may actually see each other in person, and um, especially if, especially if I can drag the father son show here. <laughs> that would be that would be great for me. Austin and I talked about it. It'd be so cool to be able to do it there. So, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, I, I enjoy talking about art, you know, more so than I did a year ago because. I know I need to do this because it's not about what I learn. It's about really about what I share because my, yeah, totally. my growth process is my, is my growth process. But if I hold that growth only for me, uh, I'm not really benefiting our community. So I need to share my knowledge. And this to me was a great, great way to do that. So I, well, I appreciate you. You have plenty of uh, knowledge. And I, I appreciate you sharing. So. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you. Take All right. care. I, will, uh, and, I uh, hope you'll come back. So, I will. I promise you I will. Okay. Take care. All right. We're out. Yeah.